So now we have um, we are back to calculus. So I have a question which is um, the differential one and integration. So the first question is uh, use the definition of the derivative from the first principle to show that the derivative of the function f of x of x squared is f of prime of x is 2x. So we need just to show, they have given us the answer already to say when we differentiate this, it's going to give us 2x. So we show using the first principle. Okay? So now the first principle, we need just to know the formula is very, very, very important. So the formula is f of prime. By the way, f of prime, it is the same as y prime it is the same as dy over dx. So if you write this, you write that, you write that, it's the same. Okay, so you just choose. In this case, since we have been told that it's f prime, I'll just follow this. So I'll say f prime is going to be the formula for the first principle is that limit as h is approaching zero, okay, of f of x plus h minus the original f of x divided by h. What does it mean? In the function of x, the first part we need to say x plus h minus the original function. As simple as that. Okay? So I'll go ahead and now continue from here. I'll say limit as h is approaching 0. This function where there is x, I'm going to say x plus h. Then I square it. Because it is squared minus the original function the original function is just x squared. I divide everything by h. Cool. I'll continue and say limit as h is approaching 0. So this is going to be now, I can expand this. It's the same as I have x plus h and x plus h. So say x plus h times x or x times x is going to give me x squared x times h is going to give me xh. I'll go to h. h times x is going to give me xh. h times h will give me h squared. Perfect. Minus the original x squared. I divide everything by h. Okay. I'll continue from there. I can add these two. Okay. Which is going to be limit as h approaching 0. So it is this x squared and that x can be cancelled because it's x squared minus x squared. I'll end up having 2xh plus h divided by h. At this point, I can just factor out h. So I have limit as h is approaching 0. I factor out h, then this is going to be h open brackets 2x this h is squared, sorry, 2x plus h divided by h. I can also see that these two h can be cancelled. Okay, then I'll end up having limit as h approaches 0, 2x plus h, that's all. Now, at this point, if I plug in 0, it's not going to be undefined, it's going to be defined. So I'll say this is equal to 2x plus 0. 2x. Hence, shown. As simple as that. So now we, we have shown that eh, using the first principle, the derivative of x squared is just 2x using the simple steps. Okay. So that is it for this question. Now we can go to part 2, which is also under calculus, but integration. The area. So find the area. The question is find the area of the shaded region shown in the diagram below. So here is our diagram. So when we're talking about the area, when we're finding the area, we have been given the equation. This is my equation. Okay. Now, it has started from x is equal to 0 all the way to x is equal to 2. What does it mean? My lower limit is where it has started from 0. My upper limit is where it has started. 
So let me just write upper limit. So my upper limit is zero. My my oh sorry, my, my lower limit is where it has started from in x axis. Then my upper limit is where it has, the graph has ended in x axis where we, we are going to say is two. So my upper limit is equal to two. Then the equation we have been given, the y is equal to 4 minus x squared. You just integrate this. After integrating that, then we now find, after integrating now we find the, what, the area. That's all. So when we integrate, we put the, the upper limit minus the lower limit. Then that is going to be my area. So I'll say uh, area will be equal to the integral of 4 minus x squared. I put them in brackets. I know that I'm supposed to say dx. Then I'm going to put this line. I'll put the upper limit, which is 2, and the lower limit is what? Is uh, But before I do that, before I even put this, I'll just do it direct. Okay, cool. When I integrate, that's when I'm going to put it, the upper and lower limit. So let's now integrate this. So now, integrating this, we know that the upper limit, I'm going to put it. Ah, the upper limit I've said is where the graph is ending here in x-axis, not 0. It's supposed to be 2. So I'm supposed to put 2 here. So I'll, I'll put now here to say the upper limit is 2, the lower is 0. Now this is a definite integral actually. So I'll say my area will be equal to, if I integrate this, it's going to be 4x minus you know how to integrate and I know you know how to integrate so in a case where you have forgotten how to integrate this is what we do so if in this case I have 4 dx so the power increases by 1 divided by the same power so in this case I'll say is 4 x in this case is to the power 0 we know already so it could be 2 plus 1 over 1, 1 plus 0 is 1. So that's why it's 4x. The integral of x is going to be x 1 plus 1 divided by 1 plus 1, which is going to be x squared divided by 2. So in this case, this is what I've done. Now x is going to be x to the power 2 plus 1, which is 3. Okay, I divided by the power, which is 3. So it is definite integral. We are not interested in the plus c. In definite integral, that's when now we put plus c. So here now, I'm going to put these in brackets and put this line and put the upper limit on top to say it's 2. The lower limit is 0 here. So I'm supposed to say the upper limit minus the lower limit. This is what I'm going to do. Area will be equal to, I'll say 4, OK? Where there is x, I'm going to put now 2. That will be the first part. So I'll say 2 minus, again here, 2 squared minus 3. Then I put these in brackets, minus, because we are saying it's the upper limit minus the lower limit. Again, the same one, 4, but I put the lower limit minus 0 squared divided by 3, like that. So I'll end up having area to be equal to 4 times z. 4 times 8, ah, 4 times 2 is 8, minus this is 4, divided by 3, is just 4 over 3. 4 over 3, minus 4 times, here I'm going to end up having 0. So what else can we see? We can also see that my area will be equal to, I have just 8 minus 4 over 3. Let's go ahead and simplify that. So we have 8 minus 4 over 3. Okay, I put divided by 1. So the common denominator is 3. 1 into 3 is that. So I'll say 3 times 3 times um, 8 is 20, 
8 times 3, that is 24. So I'll put a 24 minus 4. Okay. But we said this was to the power 3. Okay. Just here, let me let me just go back a bit. Uh, just noticed a mistake. Here we said it's to the power 3. So here I've put 2, which is supposed to be 3. Okay. So 3, I'm supposed to put 8. So let me start now from here. We have made a mistake here. I'm supposed to put to the power 3 over 3, yes. Then minus 4, 0, minus 0 to the power 3 over 3. So now this will be, this is the same 8 we are from talking about. This is going to be 8. 2 to the power 3 is 8 divided by 3 minus. Then this is going to give us 0. Okay, that's now perfect. Then from there now we are going to say area will be equal to 8 minus 8 over 3. The common denominator is 3. Here there is 1. 1 into 3, 3, 3 times that 1 is 24. 24 minus 3 into 3 is 3. Then 3 times 8. I'll get... Ah, 3 into 3 is 1. 1 times 8 is 8. So 1, 24 minus this will give me 16 over 3. So my area will be equal to 16 over 3. So it is square units. You say square... that so in that case that's my answer so that is it for this type of calculus question